When actress Rebecca Schaefer was murdered in 1989, it set the wheels in motion for the nation's first anti-stalking laws. Privacy protections across the country were strengthened, and stalking was designated a crime for the first time in America. This is the tragic murder of 80s actress Rebecca Schaefer explained. Rebecca Schaefer was born on November 6, 1967, in Oregon, to Dana and Dr. Benson Schaefer. Schaefer's mother worked as a writer and teacher at Portland Community College, while her father specialized in child psychology. From an early age, she showed a passion for theater and drama. Soon, she was appearing in TV commercials and department store catalogs. However, according to Jewish Journal, Schaefer hadn't always aspired to be a model and had originally dreamt of becoming a rabbi. Schaefer moved to New York City and took up work as a waitress. She managed to book a few small roles on soap operas and movies over the course of two years, but nothing seemed to pan out. And then, in 1986, she landed the role of Patty on My Sister Sam, which turned out to be her breakout role. Schaefer moved to California for the part, and although audiences loved the show, it was unfortunately canceled halfway through the second season. Born on January 2, 1970, Robert John Bardo was the seventh and youngest child of June and Philip Bardo. Bardo's father had been a non-commissioned officer in the U.S. Air Force and had met Bardo's mother while he was based in Japan. The family moved around a great deal during Bardo's childhood until finally settling in Tucson in 1983. As a child, Bardo is said to have experienced severe neglect and abuse from his mother, his father, and his older brothers. Throughout his youth, he is reported to have written letters to his teachers, apparently crying out for help amidst the dire situation with his family at home. At one point, Bardo wrote that he wanted to commit suicide and that he felt at the end of his rope. Although Bardo ended up receiving a few counseling sessions, nothing else was done. His mental health problems went unaddressed and he was eventually placed in a foster home. In 1985, Bardo was admitted into a psychiatric hospital. There, he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. After one month, Bardo's parents removed him from the psychiatric hospital, and soon after, he dropped out of high school and got a job as a janitor at a jack-in-the-box. Bardo repeatedly displayed erratic behavior, and in the year and a half before Schaefer's murder, he'd been arrested three times by the police for his antisocial behavior, on charges that included domestic violence. Robert John Bardo first saw Rebecca Schaefer in a commercial for My Sister Sam, and reportedly felt an instant kinship with her. He started sending her letters and gifts. E reports that Schaefer initially found the fact that a fan was sending gifts her way to be endearing. Bardo recorded every episode of My Sister Sam and began to believe that he had a real and legitimate relationship with her. And when Schaefer responded to one of Bardo's letters, he decided that was a sign that she felt the same way about him as he did about her. He then started visiting Los Angeles himself trying to meet Schaefer in person. But once he got to Burbank's studio looking to meet Schaefer, teddy bear and flowers in hand, Bardo was unable to make it past security. Real Reviews reports that one month later, Bardo tried again, this time armed with a knife, but he was still unable to gain entrance into Burbank's studio. In response, Bardo wrote in his diary, I don't lose, period. This wasn't the first time that Bardo had stalked someone. At one point in the 1980s, Bardo had become obsessed with Samantha Smith, a young peace activist, and had attempted to go to Maine looking for her. However, he was arrested on the way and sent home. After Smith tragically died in a plane crash in 1985, Bardo turned his sights onto Debbie Gibson, a pop star, and went to New York in pursuit of her. Bardo's infatuation with Rebecca Schaefer became deadly after he saw her in scenes from the class struggle in Beverly Hills. Seeing her in a sex scene with another actor put him into a rage. Clinical police and forensic psychologist Dr. Chris Mahandi describes how these feelings were converted into a plan to murder, with Bardo telling himself, I'm going to punish you and permanently possess you by taking your life. Originally, Bardo had been obsessed by Schaefer's innocence and didn't understand the idea that she was playing a character. He said, She came into my life in the right moment. She was brilliant, pretty, outrageous. Her innocence impressed me. She turned into a goddess for me, an idol. Since then, I turned into an atheist. I only adored her. Now he felt betrayed. In blindsided homicide where it is least expected, Gregory K. Moffat writes that Bardo later told a court-appointed psychiatrist, quote, if she was a whore, God was going to appoint me to punish her. 
Bardo also wrote a letter to his sister that read, I have an obsession with the unattainable, and I have to eliminate what I cannot attain. According to the Saturday Evening Post, it was at this point that Bardo decided to find Schaefer's home address. On March 15, 1982, actress Teresa Saldana was attacked by a stalker named Arthur Richard Jackson. He had become obsessed with Saldana after seeing her films and planned on murdering her in order to reunite with her in heaven. According to the New York Times, Jackson used a private detective to find Saldana's apartment building, where he stabbed her all over her body ten times with a hunting knife. Saldana managed to survive because a delivery man who was driving by stopped his truck and fought Jackson off. According to E!, Robert John Bardo read an article about Jackson and Saldana and was inspired to hire a private detective in order to track down Rebecca Schaefer. Yeah, I, uh, the Teresa Saldana case, I read about that in People magazine, and that's where I got the idea to hire the uh, private investigator. He'd initially tried to get her address from Schaefer's agent on July 17, 1989, but had been refused. So for the price of $300, private investigator Anthony Zinkus got Schaefer's address from DMV Records. After Bardo got Schaefer's address from the private eye, he went to Schaefer's apartment on July 18, 1989. Witnesses later recalled, We saw Bardo on Rebecca's street, showing passersby her photo and asking if they knew her and where she lived. Although people ignored him, Bardo found Schaefer's building. Since the intercom wasn't working, Schaefer came down to the front door when Bardo rang the bell. When Schaefer came to the door, Bardo showed her how she'd responded so kindly to his letters and told her that he was her biggest fan. Schaefer was polite in turn, but she told Bardo that she was busy at the moment and said, please take care, as she shook his hand and bid him goodbye. Bardo went to Jan's restaurant for a meal and then returned to Schaefer's apartment one hour later. This time when Schaefer came down, she said, you came to my door again, hurry up, I don't have much time. E also notes that she was also waiting for the script for The Godfather Part 3, since she was scheduled to audition for the role of Mary Corleone, which might explain why she was willing to repeatedly answer the door. During the trial, Bardo stated that he said, I forgot to give you something. He then shot her twice in the chest. Rebecca Schaefer's neighbor, Richard Goldman, heard two gunshots and two screams and came racing to the front door. However, Schaefer died shortly after being rushed to the hospital. Goldman and other witnesses saw a man in a yellow shirt leaving the scene, but they lost sight of him after he turned into an alley. The following day, police in Tucson, Arizona were informed that there was a man walking in between cars on the highway, yelling, I killed Rebecca Schaefer. When asked about this incident later, Bardo said, I thought I owed it to Rebecca to kill myself after what had happened. Tucson police arrested Bardo and his statements were taken to be a confession to murdering Schaefer. And Bardo offered little to no resistance to the police. According to Associated Press, Bardo appeared to be exhausted and was in an unkempt and filthy condition when he was picked up by the police. He was held on a bail of $1 million until witnesses confirmed that he was the one they saw at Schaefer's apartment. Then, Bardo was extradited to California. Robert John Bardo's trial began in late September 1991. During the trial, it was revealed that when he first tried to purchase a gun, he was turned down due to his history of mental illness. All That's Interesting writes that Bardo was undeterred and asked his brother to purchase it for him instead. Allegedly, the brother made Bardo swear to only use the gun when the two of them were together and he was able to be supervised. Bardo's sister also testified that on the morning of Rebecca Schaefer's murder, Bardo had called her to let her know that he was near the actress's home. Bardo's history of mental illness was brought up by his defense attorney, Stephen Galindo, but then-Deputy District Attorney Marcia Clark dismissed this, claiming that Bardo was obsessed rather than mentally ill. Galindo hoped to use Bardo's history of mental illness to prove that he was incapable of planning the murders, and thus only guilty of murder in the second degree. He was a victim of a mental health system which was powerless to provide the type of help that he needed. The prosecutors had agreed not to seek the death penalty, so after being found guilty of murder in the first degree, Bardo was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. As of 2021, Bardo continues to serve his life sentence at Avenal State Prison in California. In 1990, California passed the first anti-stalking law in the United States in response to Rebecca Schaefer's murder. According to California's anti-stalking statute by Christine B. Gregson, 
Stalking is repeatedly following or harassing another person and making a credible threat that causes the person to fear bodily harm. Although a first stalking offense might be prosecuted as a felony, it may only be regarded as a misdemeanor if there isn't already a restraining order in place. This is likely due to the fact that Rebecca Schaefer wasn't the only woman murdered by a stalker that year. According to E!, apparently four other women had been murdered in Orange County alone, despite their having restraining orders filed against the men they were afraid of. Soon, the rest of the country created their own anti-stalking laws, and in 1996, Congress passed the Interstate Stalking Punishment and Prevention Act of 1996. According to the Law Library, the act was supposed to, quote, close the gaps between individual state laws and to bolster their deterrent effect. Considering that more than one actress had been assaulted, the Screen Actors Guild also centered their efforts around privacy protections and began lobbying California to strengthen their privacy laws. The Los Angeles Times reports that, originally, it only took $1 to $5 to get anyone's home address from the DMV, as long as you filled out all the paperwork. In 1988 alone, the DMV reportedly received 16 million requests of this type. In response to Schaefer's murder, information regarding home addresses became heavily restricted, only accessible by entities such as law enforcement and insurance agencies. In 1994, Congress similarly passed the Driver's Privacy Protection Act, which mandated that every state's DMV apply similar protections. This act makes it illegal for state DMVs to give out the personal information of a driver without explicit authorization from the driver. However, The Hollywood Reporter notes that these protections only go so far, and there are numerous ways that stalkers can continue to torment their victims, with cyberstalking on the internet being one such way. But in 2015, cyberstalking was also made a federal crime. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite true crime cases are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.